Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning everyone. We are from Book Tour uh, and we are going to deliver a presentation about who are we assessing feedback and motivation from chapter 6. And here, I'm Winda Grizella as a moderator and, and also presenter today. And we have another presenter, there are Mutiara Putri Aulia, Ratna Dewi Sulastri, Dini Auralia Agustina Putri, Surga Sri Agustin, and the last one is me uh, as uh, the last presenter. Here are some materials that we are going to deliver today. The first is, how can knowing more about our students improve the quality of teaching and learning? Uh, the second is ongoing assessment, feedback on learning in progress. The third is assessment and student motivation. And the last one is conclusion. Right. The first is how can knowing more about our students improve uh, the quality of teaching and learning? Okay. Uh, first, uh, to know that we have to know more about our students. Assessment approaches and practices that can help us to better understand our students learning by addressing uh, these questions uh, about who our individual students are. The first is, uh, what are my students' learning goals? Uh, the second is, what motivates their learning? The third is, how can our feedback support their, their learning? And next slide. We take a closer look feedback in assessment practice and how we can shape the feedback to support our students' learning as part of day-to-day -day classroom activity. Here are some questions of assessment tools uh, from the point of view of feedback. You can see here, there are four questions that can uh, help this. The first is, what is the feedback potential of a specific assessment tool? How does this feedback differ in relation to the assessment tool? The second is, what is the potential impact on a student's learning in progress of a particular approach to assessment? The third is, how can we improve the quality of our feedback for our students? The fourth is, how can we know when the assessment information is being used and understood by our students to inform uh, their learning? As a teacher, we engage uh, in assessment in our classroom every day. Uh, our students know us and uh, we have to know them the opposite. Assessment plays an important role in our relationship with our students and their, op uh, and their openness and willingness uh, to learn. All right, uh, let's move to the next material that will be delivered by the next presenter. Please. All right. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, my name is Dini Aurali Agustina Putri, and uh, I will explain about ongoing assessment feedback on learning in progress. The first point is feedback during a course. The assessment tools we choose and assessment practices we engage in while teaching in a course will shape both the kind of feedback uh, on learning that arises as a result and the information it generates in support of our teaching. And now I will use this table to help me to explain about feedback during a course. This example is from Dana Ferris' book, Responses to Students' Writing, Implications for Second Language Students in 2003. In table uh, 6.1, presents a range of assessment practices and teacher responses. This table consists of uh, assessment practices, teacher responses in italics, students' work in underline. Ferris in 2003 suggests that there are a few hard and fast rules and little agreement as to the kind of feedback that will have the most impact on our on our individual students. And there are some teachers and researchers who argue that explicit feedback on errors in uh, writing is essential. Like in the example four, teachers, uh, like in the example four, teachers provide 
feedback on sentence level errors in a personal essay and then in example five teachers might reformulate the sentence correctly explicit uh, feedback and reformulation are actually supporting the students learning because teachers mentioned uh, the error part and fixed it directly so that students can understand for the implicit feedback yeah we can take a look at uh, the example six that illustrates how a question allows the teacher to reformulate the incorrect sentence. This feedback may motivate the student to, to, to draw on the reformulation or feedback in answering the question and earn a bonus marks as a result. Whether the feedback is direct or indirect, implicit or explicit, positive or negative, limited or extended, the key is our student's interpretation and use of the feedback. Now, uh, for example, seven and eight related to criterion reference and norm reference assessment. In example seven, there is only one evident criteria, speaking slowly. However, uh, the real information or feedback for the student is the grade of C, which is norm reference. Means a student's poster, perhaps only in average, it can be more, it can be more or less average. Meanwhile, in example seven, in example eight, I mean, provides a uh, several criteria for the students to consider. Implicit in the teacher's comments are all of the following criteria for evaluation. For poster, uh, the criteria are a colorful and attractive display, text is easy to read, topic is uh, topic focus is clear, audience interest is evident, and for the presentation, uh, the criteria are uh, well organized, observed five minute uh, time limit, and did not rush. Example eight have much information for students uh, to use it as their guide to improve their work. And following uh, two suggestions will increase, will increase the ready flow of useful feedback and improve the quality of our students' work. The first one is students will learn the most and perform their best if they know in advance the evaluation criteria that will be applied in judging a performance. Second, our feedback will also be improved if we share evaluation criteria with our students before their performance. And besides that, engaging our students in the, in the identification of, of criteria to be applied in the evaluation of a performance support uh, their self-awareness, goal setting, self-assessment, and uh, ultimately the quality of their work. It also makes our work as teachers or assessors easier because we have spelled, spelled out in advance of the performance exactly what we will be looking for. Uh, all right, maybe that's all from me. Thank you. Uh, for the next presenter, uh, for the next presenter, Ratna, please. Time is yours. All right, thank you for the change. Um, and now I am going to explain about uh, teacher's feedback has uh, conflicting roles and uh, and then the second is about assessment and student motivation. The first is teacher's feedback has conflicting roles. So in giving the feedback, um, teacher's feedback has uh, two roles. The first is uh, as a coach and the second is as a judge. Teacher's feedback as a coach intend to give supportive information to the student like uh, give the information about what should be improved by the student, like uh, what is the weakness of the student and they should be improved like that. Um, so that the student can increase their future development in learning. Uh, this uh, role um, related to a formative assessment. And then uh, the second role is as a judge. So uh, in this role, uh, intend to show the assessment uh, in the form of score or grade. Um, like, um, yeah, uh, in this role, uh, teacher's feedback related to uh, summative assessment, 
um, not only give uh, the score or uh, the grade, but the teacher also uh, should uh, give the information why the student get that score, like show this is uh, correct, this is all right, so the student can understand why uh, they get uh, that score. Uh, all right, next slide, please. Yeah, um, in this table, uh, in the case, uh, there is um, talks for from the students. Uh, this is like a letter, uh, write a writing letter talks. Um, and then in the left side, this is the example of um, judge role and the right uh, side, uh, it is the exact example of um, coach uh, role of the feedback teachers. All right, next slide, please. All right, and then the next material is about assessment and student motivation. As we know that um, assessment and student motivation cannot be separated because they are related each other. Okay, uh, next slide, please. As Cheng and Fox in 2017 believed that um, what teacher assess and how they assess, it have the grades influence on how students learn, how students are see themselves as the learners and how they see their learning. All right, next slide. Um, there are three main aspects of assessment. Uh, highlight uh, the, the relationship between assessment and motivation. The first is clear. So the teacher in giving giving feedback to the student must be clear like uh, which is the weakness and which should be improved by the student, which, which is the correct one, which is, uh, which is the wrong one like that. And then the next is must be focused, like giving feedback for that um, material. And then uh, the next is applicable. So the feedback that given by the teacher to the student must be able to uh, apply by the student to make their learning process be uh, better. And then the next is consistent and timely. And then the second is assessment and motivation addresses individual student needs. And it is following for recognition of individual student differences acknowledgement of student unique prior uh, knowledge and experience, increase uh, use of self-assessments, encouragement of self-directness, uh, and then increase student self-reflection, and then increase autonomy such as taking responsibility for their learning and then setting goals of, for learning. Yeah, so in this case, uh, the feedback uh, should can make the student be able to uh, learn, to improve, to increase uh, their learning process independently. And then the next slide, please. Uh, and the third is assessment and motivation engage the student by uh, making the assessment real, uh, such as make it contextual for the student and then offering choices in assignment, talks, tool, and procedure, and then supporting their connection with sense of belonging to um, learning community, and then including them in assessment processes, and then creating collaborative assessment practice where our students see teacher as allies. So in here, uh, for makes uh, the student engage uh, by the assessment. So we have to make um, the student um, like be a part of that assessment like that. Yeah, uh, for the next material will be delivered by Mutiara. So Mutiara, please. All right, thank you Ratna for the change. Uh, my name is Mutiara and I will explain about 
assessment, learning, and self-determination. Before we go to the explanation, there may appear a question that what the relation between assessment, learning, and self-determination? Now let's move to the statement that the role of, uh, of assessment in motivating students to learning can be traced to many, many theories, I mean, of motivation, including Theories focusing on reasons for engagement in tasks. Theories that focus on integrating expect expectancy and value constructs. And theories that integrate motivation and cognition. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. All right. Among the many theories, the theory that is suitable for the context of assessment is self-determination theory or uh, STT, which was introduced by Rian and Dechi uh, in 2000. Um, this theory uh, range from self-determined forms of intrinsic motivation to controlled forms of extrinsic motivation, and finally to a motivation, depending on degrees of self-determination. Testing and assessment policies are mostly based on the concept that rewards, punishment, and self-esteem-based uh, pressures are effective motiva motivator for learning. SDT, or uh, self-determination theory, thus fits well in this uh, assessment context. Ryan and this and the Chi 2000 uh, in 2000 identified uh, four types of uh, motivation from the most self-determined to the least self-determined. Uh, the first is intrinsic motivation. The second is self-determination, the self-determined extrinsic motivation. So uh, non-self-determined extrinsic motivation and a motivation. Next slide, please. Okay, the first is intrinsic motivation. It uh, refers to motivation that makes one feel engaged in an activity that is inherently interesting or enjoyable. If the assessment uh, practice teachers employ make a student feel learning in, uh, learning is interesting and enjoyable, then a student will be intrinsically motivated. In contrast, ex extrinsic motivation refers to motivation that is instrumental in nature. In other words, the activity uh, is a means to an end, but the requirement to engage in the activity is imposed to uh, imposed on the individual and may not even be something they want to do. Uh, next slide, please. However, uh, there's a self-determined extrinsic, extrinsic uh, motivation, uh, which uh, present when individuals participate in an activity voluntarily because they perceive the activity is valuable and important. It is extrinsic because the reason for participation is not within the activity itself, but it uh, but is a means to an end. And uh, sometimes it is uh, self-determined because the individual has experienced a sense of direction and purpose in acting. If the assessment practice teachers employ make a student feel uh, that their learning is an important part of the process for self-improvement, student may have self-determined extrinsic motivation to learn. Further, non-self-determined extrinsic motivation occurs when individuals' behaviors are regulated by external factors such as reward, constraints, and punishment. This type of motivation is extrinsic because the reason individuals participate in an activity lies outside the activity itself. Uh, in example, family pressure. That is, the behavior is not self-determined. Individuals feel um, an obligation to engage and are regulated by external reward, constraint, or punishment. If the assessment practices uh, teachers employ make students feel that their le learning is driven by external rewards, such as bonus marks and grading or prize from teachers, students are non-self-determined extrinsically motivated. Next slide, please. 
Okay, finally, a motivation. A motivation is the absence of both intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. It is a state in which an individual lacks the intention to act. In this case, students may feel that they have no control over their action or that to act in meaningless or without value or import importance. When assessment fails to motivate students to learn either in in intrinsically or extrinsically, it is essentially a useless activity. Next slide, please. Yeah, so Ryan and Dich's SDT or self-determination uh, theory categories categorizes a motivation along the continuum from uh, self-determined for uh, forms of intrinsic motivation to controlled form of extrinsic extrinsic motivation and finally to a motivation they connect motivation to an individual's degree of engagement testing and assessment policies are often based on uh, the concept that rewards punishment and self-esteem based uh, pressures are effective motivation motivator uh, for learning sdt or self-determination theory helps to account for the for the complexity of individual perception of assessment, motivation, and learning. Maybe that's all from me. The next material will be presented by my friend. Surga, please. All right, thank you very much, Kutiara. Uh, the next one is assessment motivation strategies. Uh, teachers can effectively encourage their students by engaging them in the assessment process through various uh, approaches. Here are the three important assessment examples that show how we may help students develop motivation. The first one is teachers can share the assessment criteria with their students or even better collaborate with them to construct the criteria. What assessment methods are beneficial in helping students feel teachers as uh, their allies in their learning? The criteria can then be used by teachers to provide feedback to students on their performance. Teachers should begin their assessment process in the small steps since we must consider our students' uh, learning backgrounds. For some of our students, this might be a completely new experience. Uh, in the end, however, Practice assists in bringing all students' learning in line. In other words, sharing or understanding the same learning goals or destination, even if the roads to get there are different and individual. The second one is teachers can utilize students' works as example to demonstrate different levels of achievement. This is better achievement through cooperation in which teachers work together over time to build a collection of students' work. Furthermore, having teachers collaborate helps assure assessment consistency. That is, teachers must agree on what makes excellent work and more crucially, what such work looks like in terms of language usage and evidence of knowledge or content control. And the last one is teachers can inspire their students by allowing them to take more responsibility for their own learning through assessment as learning. Because many of our students live far away from their family, taking charge of their own uh, education is a big but necessary first step towards success. Teachers can illustrate that achievement with uh, or will have long term influence on students' life by using self and PR assessment projects. Self-assessment allows students to see their own progress and so become more motivated to succeed. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, right. Uh, we may assess our students by teaching them to be more analytical uh, about their own learning, uh, providing them with time and st structure in class to uh, review their own work in reference to previously explained criteria and emphasizing how they might improve their work, for example, by thinking about doing better uh, by Steve Dellar 2015. Students are asked to identify some learning goals after discussing their mistake with 
a partner. Students began uh, the process of setting their own learning objective by examining what they are doing well and what they need to improve on. Students should be encouraged to develop small achievable goals since the most beneficial goals are ones that demonstrate progress rather than merely the end result. Students can self-monitor their progress to achievement by taking small measures. Uh, maybe that's all from me. Thank you very much. The next, the next material will be presented by Linda. Linda? All right. Thank you for the last presenter. Uh, so we are here. We can conclude uh, this chapter as the importance of the relationship between assessment and motivation in sporting student learning has been increasingly examined in education. Teachers can exert influence on student motivation through instruction, assessment, and feedback. So uh, that's all the material from us today. Uh, we, we apologize if there is any mistake. Uh, if you are have any question, you can contact us as a personal chat. Thanks for your attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.